Hey hey folkies, my name is Emily Valsken and I play Scandinavian folk music on fiddle and nickel harpa. This video is going to be about ornamentation in Scandinavian folk music. Basically I'm gonna give you a list of ornaments and some tips on how to play them. Just I want to add my little disclaimers before we get into the subject. Um, First, I know only what I know, meaning that my knowledge is limited and I also can make mistakes. And also, what I'm going to say is just a generalization, an overview of a very complex and vast subject. Therefore, I can't go into all regional uh, like differences and so on. Also, if you are not comfortable with Scandinavian languages, no worries, because all the Swedish and Norwegian terms I am going to say during this video, I will list in the description down below. And last uh, disclaimer I want to add specifically, specifically to this video is basically it's gonna be extremely bowing related, bowed instrument related, so fiddle, nickel harpa and also adapted to uh, viola, cello and so on. Uh, I hope that you will find ways to adapt what I'm going to say to all the types of instruments, but there are maybe some techniques that might not be possible to adapt to all instruments. I hope it's gonna be okay. Now let's get into the subject. Ornamentation. I'm going to classify the ornaments into three different groups, and the first and most important one is gonna be the ornaments that are very often used and very traditionally used in Scandinavian folk music. So let's get into this first. First ornament, uh, easiest one maybe, is the trill. So if I take a very small simple melody, D, E, F, and I want to put a drill on my F, I can do it like this with a G. But if I want to sound more specifically Scandinavian, especially specifically Swedish, I'm going to make a drill from the E with the F, landing on the F, like this. And basically, when I play a drill in Scandinavian folk music, I am going to make quite a short drill, so two or three beats, not more. Talking about very short drills, if I play only one beat, then it's called a mordant, and mordants are used all over Scandinavia very much, a bit everywhere. So mordant is also a kind of ornament you can play, and you can vary it quite much, depending on which note you play as a mordant. For example, if I uh, play a F sharp, I can play a mordant with a G, with a G sharp, with an A, etc. So basically I have the choice between different notes uh, with which to play the mordant on my basic note. So with that you already have a lot to experiment with. Then another ornament I want to talk about, which is very common in Scandinavia, but very subtle, so you may not have heard it, like you may have heard it but not noticed it yet, uh, if you didn't know it was there, is the unison. And basically this is often played on the last note of a tune, as we often end on uh, D or G or A, sometimes E or C on nickel harpa, because the keys of Scandinavian music are very much those ones, um, you can basically, if you end on an A, you can play an open string, which is very easy, but you can also play unison by adding another A to it, which is basically on your downstring from the A, so the D, you put another A and you play this A together with the open string which gives you a very powerful ending, very like strong tone, strong sound. And it's a bit tricky because you have to put your pimki very around in order to not touch the open string and make a very weird sound on it. Um, but once you have mastered this, you can get into what I call the Norwegian drill. Uh, obviously mostly played in Norway, but not only. And it's the fact of playing a unison and then with your first finger, you're gonna drill on the open string, like this. This is actually a very nice ornament, it's one of my favorites, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so those are like the ornaments that are mostly played on the left hand, 
uh, but you can also play ornaments with your bow. And the easiest ornament you can play with your bow is basically just a drone using one of the open strings next to the melody string you're playing. For example, on my A string I have this little melody. And I can try if it fits with one of the open strings next to my A string, which is a D, for example. I kinda like it. I can also try with the other open string, which is the E. I like it too. And this gives you already pretty many possibilities to vary your music. You're playing the same melody, but you're putting another drone, so the feeling changes quite a lot. And you can also, of course, change your drone by putting a finger on this open string, like this. And there you're getting into double stops. I am not going to go into details in double stop subject because it's huge, it's vast, it's complex. But I want to give you one specific ornament that I've heard mostly in short verse big polskas and especially in Vermland Polska and Rörospots. And this is this very specific ornament when you have a little scale, usually from A to E with a C sharp. And just for so you know, I am saying H and Beth and not B, so there's no confusion about this one. So this little melody. And you can add just a simple D drone there. But you can also play something a little bit more interesting, which is... So, you play two open strings together, A and D. Then you put your first finger on both strings, so you have E and H. Then you put your second finger, C sharp, and you keep your E. And when you put your third finger, so D, you release the first finger. To get an octave D and D. Very common and also very nice. If we get more into just bow technique, just bowing ornament, um, when you play a drone, you can play it very just simple and flat, but you can also decide to play it with a rhythm to make it more interesting. And then we get into what we call in Swedish die stroke, stroke being bow or bowing, and die being just like showing the, the sound it makes, die, 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 die. So I am going to play for you just the A part of the Polska called Flood and Stad, F. the August Pauline. And first I played just the melody without anything, and then I played with a flat drone, just simple, and then I played with die stroke. strings here A and D and you play a down bow starting from the frog and when you reach the middle you lift a bit your hand so you play only on the D string it can be C if you are tuned in traditional Swedish tuning I am not basically and then you do the same with an up bow like the two strings and then one string, two strings, one string, and then you accelerate slowly and you also shorten your bow at the same time. And basically my hand is doing kind of an eight, like a lying down eight, which is getting a bit into a curve, if you see the shape I'm doing. 
And basically you can do one curve per bowing, but you can also do two, for example. So you can do one. your dice talk to different patterns of melodies and different rhythms and style of dance, maybe vals, polska and so on. So these are the ornaments that are the most, I'd say, traditional um, in Scandinavia. There are some more, of course. Then let's get into the second category. And those are the ornaments that I call the modern and cool ornaments. Um, those ornaments are not traditional in the way that you know those old guys that were recorded in the 60s or 70s and put into the archives were probably not playing those ornaments. But nowadays in the folk music world they are getting quite popular and therefore I think it's good to know about them as well. And um, people, like usually young people or people who are very interested in other cultures, other repertoires, and other styles of music who like to experiment and mix things together, they usually use those two. The first one I want to talk about is the slide. Um, slide is basically not an ornament that is very much used, but you may hear it and it gives you a very nice, cool effect. Little story, once I was playing music for uh, people who were not super interested about what I was doing, they were a bit, I don't know, listening, but not very, like, not really there in a way. And I just played one slide and after that they started clapping and saying hey and being there and like really sharing the music. So slide, up or down slide, as you want. Something you can really use as a little like wink to the, to the audience and something cool and nice to play with. And I personally love to use slide on my last note and just slide down a little bit. And it's really like bringing smiles on faces. And Another ornament I want to talk about that is really, really taking over Scandinavia at the moment is the chop. I am not going to teach you how to chop because there are people who know much better about that than I do and I suggest you look up uh, some great fiddlers and cello players as Daryl Anger, Rochard Glesten and so on. I make a little list in the description. Um, but basically I want just to tell you how you can use the chop in Scandinavian music. I personally use it two different ways. The first way is when there is someone else playing the melody and I'm doing an accompaniment and I'm playing just like chords and chops, like this for example. And so on. So this is a way to use it. There is not really an ornament, but if you want to use the chop as an ornament, you can use it pretty much like a mordant. So basically you're gonna add just one little chop somewhere where you want to put an emphasis and also some cool feeling. To show you what I mean with that, I'm gonna play just a little part of the Halling etter Ilmar Hilmar Alexandersen. First without the chop. Ah. And now with the chop. can use it like here on a silence or also between two notes to just like kick, kick a bit energy there. Now let's move on to the third category I want to talk about today and this is the category of the ornaments that are seldomly or very specifically used in Scandinavian folk music. Um, so basically the first one I want to talk about is the long drill. So four beats or more <laughs> This kind of thing. From what I know, and I hear I'm going to talk only about Sweden because I'm not sure about all variations in Norway, Finland, Denmark and so on. From what I know in Sweden, it's used only those long drills um, in the Cilian area in Dalarna. Pretty much there. So basically, if you want to stay very traditional and you're playing music from around Cilian in Dalarna, you can just go on, like, you can just go for long drills. But if you're playing tunes from other regions, I would suggest you stick to, like, shorter drills, drill from down or more dance. The other ornament I want to talk about um, is the roll, and all kinds of rolls, basically. And all those things. 
Um, basically, if I hear personally someone playing Scandinavian folk music with roles, I am going to think, oh, this person probably has a Celtic music background. Which is totally fine and totally nice. I do love Celtic music. I wish I knew more about it. But it depends how you want to sound. If you want to be extremely precisely Scandinavian sounding, then you should probably avoid the roles because you will very quickly sound a bit Celtic or from another place because it's not really spread over Scandinavia, those roles. If you don't care, if you like to mix traditions together and experiment things, just go on with roles. It's perfectly fine. It's musical, it's musical and personal choice, so you can really go for it. Um, and the last ornament I would like to talk about is vibrato. Basically, vibrato sounds extremely classical, emotional, romantic, and so on. If you want a very folky, hardcore folk sound, I would say avoid playing vibrato, because then you will sound classical. And also, I would su suggest you to avoid vibrato for two reasons, and especially if you're kind of a beginner. First reason is that if you are playing like a quick tune, or like quick notes and so on, vibrato can make them very like blurred and unclear, and make the melody a bit like not very sure. And especially for people who are not very stable with their pitch on the fiddle yet, vibrato can really make your hand very unstable and then you have lots of difficulties having a good pitch. There is the, <laughs> the teaching, the, the teacher speaking in me. Try to not get into vibrato too early in your learning of fiddle playing because you will destroy your left hand uh, abilities, possibly. Then it depends on the context. If you're playing a concert and you're playing a very slow and emotional valse, for example, and you have a long note and you want to put some vibrato there, there is space for it, so just go on and do it. Um, but if you're playing for dancing and you're playing like an energetic Rehlender or Polska or something, it's probably not a good place to put the vibrato because there is not space for it and you will just make everything like blurred and so on. So this was my list. Uh, I would like to add a little conclusion to this list of ornaments, which is to bring you the metaphor of the month. Let's compare your melody to a pumpkin soup and your ornaments to spices. Hope you like pumpkin soup, I do. Um, basically, if you have a good pumpkin soup and if you know how to add spices in the right amount and good spices going well together, you can really level up the taste of your soup and make it amazing. But the danger is to put too much spices. And it can, like if you put too much spices, it can become, like your, your general soup can become unclear what the taste is, like there are too many informations, you don't know what vegetable it is anymore, is it pumpkin or potato or carrot? And even it can become disagreeable or aggressive if it's really too much. Like if you put the whole jar of black pepper in your soup, it's probably becoming really aggressive to most people eating your soup. And it's the same with ornaments. Of course, when you learn a new ornament, you play 10,000 times and you really get deep into it. But when you have put that into your toolbox, like be careful about how much of an ornament you play. So play around with different ornaments and try them in different places in your melodies and check which one are passing well together and check what seems to be the right amount for your ears. Because ornaments are just decorations. They are not supposed to hide the melody, if you see what I mean. Um, also, if you're like me and you have a tendency to play lots of ornaments because you love them, I highly suggest that sometimes you decide, okay, today I play only melody without any ornament at all. And the first time you're doing that, it might sound very boring and flat. And you'll be like, ugh, this is awful, I hate this sound. But it's actually extremely good exercise, because then you can really concentrate on your pure and rough sound, what you're really producing as a, like the core, in a way. You can check that the pumpkin itself is tasting good and that you like it. And then when you have made sure that this core sound is good, then you can add the fluffiness and the decorations and spices around.
and I guarantee you that if you are having a really good like basic sound and then you know how to add your spices on that, your ornaments, you will really play amazing music. So this was the video about ornaments in Scandinavian folk music. I hope you liked it, I hope you learned things. Um, as usual, if you have questions, if something wasn't clear or anything you want to like talk about, please don't hesitate to write to me, I love nerdy questions. Also, if you have any feedback for me about the video and or the content, uh, also critics, you can also write to me. And if you have suggestions or wishes about subjects I should talk about in future videos, also feel free to tell me. I don't guarantee I'm gonna cover all the wishes you're telling me about, um, because sometimes I just don't have the knowledge about them. But I will try, I will keep them in mind. Actually, this video was a wish from someone who asked me about ornamentation in Scandinavian folk music. Here it is. Last but not least, I really want to tell you a big, big thank you, because you have been supporting me, you have been commenting, giving me your thoughts about what I'm doing. It's really, really heartwarming to get your support and critics and feedback and comments. It's really, really nice. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. I hope you'll have a lot of fun playing, dancing, singing folk music. And see you next month.